Paradise Lost, Book 3 Hail, holy light of spring of heaven firstborn, or of the eternal co-eternal beam, may I express thee unblamed, since God is light, and never but in unapproached light dwelt from eternity. Dwelt then in thee, bright effluence of bright essence in create, or hearest thou rather pure ethereal stream, whose fountain who shall tell? Before the sun, before the heavens foe welt, and at the voice of God, as with a mantle disinvest, the rising world of waters dark and deep, one from the void and formless infinite, thee I revisit now with bolder wing, escape the Stygian pool, though long detained in that obscure surgeon, while in my flight, though utter and through middle darkness born with other notes than to the Orphean lyre, I sung of chaos and eternal night, taught by the heavenly muse to venture down the dark descent, and up to reascend, though hard and rare, thee I revisit safe, and feel thy sovereign vital lamp, but thou revisits lift not these eyes, that roll in vain, to find thy piercing ray, and find no dawn. So thick a drop serene have quenched their orbs, or dim sufficient veiled. Yet not the more sees I to wonder where the muses haunt, clear spring, or shady grove, or sunny hill, smit with the love of sacred song. But chief they say on, and the flowery brooks beneath, that wash thy hallowed feet, and warbling flow, nightly I visit. Nor sometimes forget, those other two equalled with me in fate, so were I equalled with them in renown. Blind Femiris and blind mere knights, and Tiresias and Phinos prophets old, then feed on thoughts, that voluntary move, harmonious numbers, as the wakeful bird sings darkly, and in shadiest covert head, tunes her nocturnal note. Thus, with the year, seasons return, but not to me returns day, or the sweet approach of evening or morn, or sight of vernal bloom, or summer's rose, or flocks, or herds, or human face divine, but cloud instead, and ever during dark surrounds me, from the cheerful ways of man cut off, and for the book of knowledge fair presented with a universal blank of nature's works to me a spongin and raised, and wisdom at once entrance quite shut out, so much the rather thou celestial light shine inward, and the mind through all her powers irradiate, their plant eyes, all mists from thence purge and disperse, that I may see and tell of things invisible to mortal sight. Now, had the Almighty Father from above, from the pure Empyrean where he sits, high throned above all height, bent down his eye, his own works and their works at once to view. About him all the sanctities of heaven stood thick as stars, and from his sight received beatitude past utterance, on his right the radiant image of his glory sat, his only son. On earth he first beheld our two first parents, yet the only two of mankind, in the happy garden placed, reaping immortal fruits of joy and love, uninterrupted joy, unrivalled love, in blissful solitude. He then surveyed hell and the gulf between, and Satan there coasting the wall of heaven on the side night in the dim air sublime, and ready now to stoop with wearied wings and willing feet on the bare outside of this world. That seemed firm land, embosomed without firmament, uncertain which, in ocean or in air, him, God, beholding from his prospect high, wherein past, present, future he beholds, Thus to his only son foreseeing spake. Only begotten son, seest thou what rage transports our adversary, whom no bounds prescribed, no bars of hell, 
nor all the chains het on him there, nor yet the main abyss wide interrupt can hold. So bent he seems on desperate revenge, that shall rebound upon his own rebellious head, and now, through all restraint, broke loose his wings, his way not far off heaven, in the precincts of light, directly towards the new created world, and man there placed, there with purpose to assay. If him by force he can destroy, or worse, by some false guile pervert and shall pervert, for man will hearken to his glozing lies, and easily transgress the sole command, sole pledge of his obedience. So will fall he and his faithless progeny, whose fault, whose but his own, in great he had of me all he could have. I made him just and right, sufficient to have stood, though free to fall, so I created all the ethereal powers and spirits, both them who stood and them who failed. Freely they stood who stood and fell who fell, not three. What proof could they have given sincere, of true allegiance, constant faith or love? Were only what they needs must do, appeared, not what they would. What praise could they receive? What pleasure I from such obedience paid? When will and reason, reason also is choice, unless and vain of freedom both despoiled, made passive both, had served necessity, not me. They therefore as to right belonged, so we created nor can justly accuse thy maker, or thy making, or thy fate as if predestination overruled thy will, disposed by absolute decree or high foreknowledge, they themselves decreed thy own revolt. Not I. If I foreknew, foreknowledge had no influence on their fault, which had no less proved uncertain, unforeknown. So without least impulse or shade of fate, or aught be me immutable foreseen, they trespass authors to themselves in all both but they judge and what they choose for so i form three three and three they must remain till they enthrall themselves i else must change their nature and revoke the high decree unchangeable eternal which ordained thy freedom they themselves ordained their fall the first sort by their own suggestion fell self-tempered self-depraved man falls deceived by the other first man therefore shall find grace the other none in mercy and justice both through heaven and earth so shall my glory excel but mercy first and last shall brightness shine thus while god spake ambrosia fragrance filled all heaven and in the blessed spirit's elect sense of new joy immovable diffused beyond compare the son of god was seen most glorious in him all his father shone substantially expressed and in his face divine compassion visibly appeared love without end and without measure grace which uttering thus he to his father spake o oh, father gracious was that word which closed thy sovereign sentence that man should find grace, for which both heaven and earth shall have extol. Thy praises with the innumerable sound of hymns and sacred songs, wherewith the throne in compass shall resound thee ever blessed. For should man finally be lost, should man thy creature, late so loved thy youngest son, fall circumvented thus by fraud, though joined, with his own folly, that by from thee far, that far be from thee. Father, who art judge of all things made, and judgest only right, and shall the adversary thus obtain his end, and frustrate thine? Shall he fulfil his malice, and thy goodness bring to naught, or proud return through to his heaven doom? Yet with revenge accomplished unto hell draw him, the whole race of mankind by him corrupted 
or wilt thou thyself abolish thy creation and unmake for him what for thy glory thou hast made so should thy goodness and thy greatness both be questioned and blasphemed without defence to whom the great creator thus replied o son in whom my soul hath chief delight son of my bosom son who art alone my word my wisdom and effectual might all hast thou spoken as my thoughts are all as my eternal purpose hath decreed man shall not quite be lost but saved who will yet not of will in him but grace in me freely volksaft once more i will renew his lapsed powers though forfeit and defrauded by sin to foul exuberant desires upheld by me yet once more he shall stand on even ground against his mortal foe by me upheld that he may know how frail his fall and condition is and to me owe all his deliverance and to none but me soon i have chosen of peculiar grace elect above the rest so is my will the rest shall hear me call and oft be warned their sinful state and to appease betimes then incense deity while offered grace invites for i will clear thy senses dark what may suffice and soft and stony hearts to pray repent and bring obedience due to prayer repentance and obedience due though but endeavoured with sincere intent mine ear shall not be slow mine eye not shut and i will place within them as a guide my umpire conscience whom if they will hear light after light well used by shall attain and to the end persisting safe arrive this my long sufferance on my day of grace they who neglect and scorn shall never taste but hard be hardened blind to blinded more that they may stumble on and deeper fall and none but search for mercy i exclude but yet all is not done man disobeying disloyal breaks his fealty and sins against the high supremacy of heaven affecting godhead and so losing all to expiate his treason hath not left but to destruction sacred and devote he with his whole pestulate must die he with his whole posterity must die die he or justice must unless for him some other able and as willing pay the rigid satisfaction death for death say heavenly powers we shall we find such love which of ye will be mortal to redeem man's mortal crime and just the unjust to save dwells in all heaven charity so dear he asked but all the heavenly choir stood mute and silence was in heaven on man's behalf patron or intercessor none appeared much less that dust upon his own head draw of a deadly forfeiture, and ransom set and now without redemption all mankind must have been lost a judging to death and hell by doom severe had not the son of god in whom the fullness dwells of love divine his dearest meditation thus renewed father thy word is past man shall find grace and shall grace not find means that finds her way the speediest of thy winged messengers to visit all thy creatures and to all comes up prevented unimplored unsought happier for men so coming he her aid can never seek once dead in sins and lost atonement for himself or offering meet indebted and undone hath none to bring behold me then me for him life for life i offer on me let thine angel fall account me man i for his sake will leave thy bosom and for this glory next to thee freely put off and for him lastly die well pleased on me let death wreck all his rage under his gloomy power i shall not long lie vanquished 
thou hast given me to possess life in myself forever, by there I live. Though now to death I yield, and am his due, all that of me can die, yet that debt paid. Thou wilt not leave me in the lonesome grave, his prey. Now suffer my unspoilt soul for ever with corruption there to dwell, for I shall rise victorious and subdue my vanquisher, spoiled of his vented spoil. Death, his deaths, which shall then receive and stoop in glorious of his mortal sting disarmed. I through the ample air in triumph high shall lead hell captive, Morga hell, and shall the powers of darkness bound. Thou at the sight pleased, out of heaven shalt look down and smile, while by there raised I ruin all my foes, death last, and with his carcass glut the grave. Then with the multitude of my redeemed shall enter heaven long absent, and return, Father, to see thy face, wherein no cloud or anger shall remain, but peace assured, and reconcilement, Wrath shall be no more, thenceforth, but in the presence joy entire. His words here ended, but his meek aspect silent yet spake, and breathed immortal love to mortal men, above which only shone failure obedience, as a sacrifice, glad to be offered, he attends the will of his great father. Admiration seized, and all heaven with what was meant mean and whittle attend, wandering but soon the almighty Vush replied. O oh, thou in heaven, and earth the only peace found out for mankind under wrath. O oh, thou my soul complacence, well thou knowest how dear to me all my works, nor man the least, though last created, but I for him I spare. Thee from my bosom and right hand to save, By losing thee a while, the whole race lost. Thou, therefore, whom thou only canst redeem, Their nature also to thy nature join, And by thyself man among men on earth made flesh, When time shall be a virgin seed, By wondrous birth. Be thou in Adam's room, the head of all mankind, Though Adam's son, as in him perish all men, see in thee, as from a second root shall be restored, as many are as restored without thee none. His crime makes guilty all his sons. Thy merit imputed shall absolve them who renounce thy own birth righteous and unrighteous deeds, and live in thee transplanted, and from thee receive new life. So man, as is most just, shall satisfy for man. Be judged and die, and die in rays, and rise in with him rays, his brethren, ransomed with his own dear life. So heavenly love shall outdo hellish hate, giving to death and dying to redeem. So dearly to redeem what hellish hate, so easily destroyed, and still destroys in those who when they may accept no grace. Nor shalt thou be descending to assume man's nature, lessen or degrade thine own, because thou hast, thou throned in highest bliss, equal to God, and equally enjoying God-like fruition, quitted all to save a world from utter loss, and hast been found by merit more than birthright son of God, found worthiest to be so by being good, far more than great or high, because in thee love hath abandoned more than glory abounds. Therefore the humiliation shall exalt, with thee thy manhood also to his throne. Here shalt thee sit incarnate, here shalt reign, both God and man, son both of God and man, anointed universal king, all power, I give thee reign for ever, and assume thy merits, under thee as head supreme, thrones, princedoms, powers, dominions, I reduce, all knees to thee shall bow, of them that bide, in heaven, or earth, or under earth in hell, 
when thou attended gloriously from heaven shalt in the sky appear and from thee send the summering archangels to proclaim thy dread tribunal forthwith from all winds the living and forthwith the sighted dead of all past ages to the general doom shall hasten such as peel shall ruse their sleep then all thy saints assembled thou shalt judge bad men and angels they arrayed shall sink beneath thy sentence hell her numbers full thenceforth shall be for ever shut meanwhile the world shall burn and from her ashes spring new heaven and earth wherein the just shall dwell and after all their tribulations long see golden days fruitful of golden deeds with joy and love triumphing and fair truth then thou regal scepter shalt lie by for regal scepter then no more shall need god shall be all in all but all ye gods adore him who to compass all this dies adore the son and honor him as me no sooner had the almighty ceased but all the multitude of angels with a shout loud as from numbers without number sweet as from blessed voices uttering joy heaven rung with jubilee and loud hosannas filled the eternal regions lowly reverent towards either throne they bow and to the ground with solemn adoration down they cast their crowns in war with amaranth and gold immortal amaranth a flower which once in paradise fast by the tree of life began to bloom but soon for man's offence to heaven removed where first it grew there grows and flowers aloft shading the font of life and where the river of bliss through midst of heaven rolls over elysian flowers her amber stream with these that never fade the spirits elect bind their resplendent locks enwrapped with beams now in loose garlands thick thrown off the bright pavement that like a sea of jasper shone empurpled with celestial roses smiled then crowned again their golden harps they took harps ever tuned that glittering by their side like quivers hung and with preamble sweet of charming symphony they introduce their sacred song and waken raptures high no voice exempt no voice but well could join melodious part such concord as in heaven the father first they sung omnipotent immutable immortal infinite eternal king the author of all being fountain of light thyself invisible amidst the glorious brightness where thou sittest throned inaccessible but when thou saidst the full blaze of thy beams and through a cloud drawn round about thee like a radiant shrine dark with excessive bright they skirts appear yet dazzle heaven that brightest seraphim approach not but with both wings vile thy eyes thee next they sang of all creation first begotten son divine similitude in whose conspicuous countenance without cloud made visible the almighty father shines whom else no creature can behold on thee impressed the effulgence of his glory abides transfused on thee his ample spirit rests he heaven of heavens and all the powers therein by thee created and by thee threw down the aspiring dumb nations thou that day thou father's dreadful thunder didst not spare nor stop thy flaming chariot wheels that shook heaven's everlasting frame while over the next thou drovest off warring angels disarrayed back from pursuit their powers with loud acclaim thou only extolled son of thy father's might to execute fierce vengeance on all his foes not so on man him though their malice fallen father of mercy and grace thou didst not doom so strictly 
but much more to pity incline. No sooner did thy dear and only son perceive thee proposed not to doom frail man so strictly, but much more to pity inclined, he to appease thy wrath, and end the strife of mercy and justice in thy face discerned. Regardless of the bliss wherein he sat second to thee, offered himself to die for man's offence, no unexampled love, love nowhere to be found less than divine. Hail, Son of God, Saviour of men! Thy name shall be the copious matter of my song henceforth, and never shall my heart thy praise forget nor from my father's praise disjoin. Thus they in heaven, above the starry sphere, their happy hours in joy and hymning spent. Meanwhile, upon the firm, apacious globe of this round world, whose first convex divides the luminous inferior orbs enclosed from chaos and the inroad of darkness old, Satan alighted walks, a globe far off it seemed, now seems a boundless continent dark, waste and wild, under the frown of night starless exposed, and ever threatening storms of chaos blustering round increment skies. Save on that side, which from the wall of heaven, though distant far, some small reflection gains of glimmering air less vexed with tempest loud. Here walked the fiend at large in spacious field, as when a vulture on Armos bread, whose snowy ridge and raven tartar bounds, dislodging from a region scarce of prey to gorge the flesh of lambs or yielding kids on hills where flocks are fed, flies toward the springs of Ganges or Hydaspes Indian streams, but in his way lights on the barren plains of Saracana, where Chineses drive with sails and wind their cane wagons light so on this windy sea of land the fiend walked up and down alone bent on his prey alone for other creature in this place living or life less to be found was none none yet but store hereafter from the earth up hither like aerial vapours flew of all things transitory and vain when sin with vanity had filled the works of men, both all things vain, and all who in vain things built their fond hopes of glory or lasting fame, or happiness in this or the other life, and all who have their reward on earth, the fruits of painful superstition and blind zeal, naught seeking but the praise of men, here find fit retribution, empty as their deeds, all the unaccomplished works of nature's hand, abortive, monstrous, or unkindly mixed, dissolved on earth, fleet hither and in vain, till final dissolution. Wander here, not in a neighbouring moon, as some have dreamed, those argent fields more lightly habitants, translated saints, or middle spirits hold betwixt the angelica and humankind, Hither of ill-joined sons and daughters, born first from the ancient world, those giants came with many a vain exploit, though then renowned. The builders next of Babel, on the plain of Senar, and still with vain design, new Babels, had they wherewithal, would build. Others came single. He, who to be deemed a god, leaped fondly into Etna flames in Pericles, and he who to enjoy Plato's Elysium leaped into the sea, Cleombrotus, and many more too long, embryos and idiots, emirates and friars, white, black and grey, with all their trumpery. Here pilgrims roam, they strayed so far to see King Golgothia, him dead, who lives in heaven and they who to be sure of paradise dying put on the weeds of demonic or in the franciscan think to pass disguised they pass the planet seven and pass the fixed and that crystalline sphere whose balance weighs the trepidation talked and that first moved 
And now St. Peter at Heaven's wicket seems to wait them with his keys. And now at foot of Heaven's ascent they lift by feet. When lo, a violent crosswind from either coast blows them traverse ten thousand leagues awry into the devious air. Then might ye see cows, hoods and habits, with their wearers tossed and fluttered into rags. Then relics, beads, indulgences, dispensers, pardons, balls, the sport of winds. All these are whirled aloft fly over the backside of the world far off into a limbo large and broad, since called the paradise of fools, to few unknown. Long after, now unpeopled and untrod, all this dark globe the fiend found as he passed, and long he wandered, till at last a gleam of dawning light turned thitherward in haste, his travelled steps far distant. He describes, ascending by degrees magnificent up to the wall of heaven, a structure high, at top whereof, but far more rich appeared, the work as of a kingly palace gate, with forty spice of diamond and gold embellish it, thick with sparkling orient gems. The portal shone, imitable on earth by model or by shading pencil drawn. The stairs were such as whereon Jacob saw angels ascending and descending, bands of guardians bright, when he saw from Esau fled to Pandaranum in the field of Luz, dreaming by night under the open sky and walking cried, This is the gate of heaven! Each stair mysteriously was meant, nor stood there always, but drawn up to heaven sometimes viewless and underneath a bright sea flowed of jasper, or of liquid pearl, whereon, who after came from earth, sailing arrived wafted by angels, or flew over the lake, wrapped in a chariot drawn by fiery steeds. The stairs were then let down, whether to dare, the fiend by ease ascent or aggravate, his sad exclusion from the doors of bliss, direct against which opened from beneath, just over the blissful seat of paradise. A passage down to the earth, a passage wide, wider by far than that of after times over Mount Zion, and, though that were large, over the promised land to God so dear, by which to visit of those happy tribes. From Peneus, the fount of Jordan's flood, to Beersaba, where the Holy Land borders on Egypt and the Arabian shore, so wide the opening seemed where bounds were set to darkness, such as bound the ocean wave. Satan, from hence now on the lower stair, that scaled by steps of gold to heaven gate, looks down with wonder at the sudden view of all the world at once. As when a scout through dark and desert ways with peril gone all night, at last by break of cheerful dawn, obtains the brow of some high-climbing hill, which, to his eye, discovers unaware the goodly prospect of some foreign land first seen, or some renowned metropolis with glistening spires and pinnacles adorned, which now the rising sun glides with his beams. Such wonder sees through after heaven seen, a spirit malign, but much more envy seized at sights of all this world beheld so fair. Round he surveys, and well might, where he stood so high above the circling canopy of night's extended shade, from eastern point of Libya to the fleecy star that bears Andromeda far off Atlantic seas beyond the horizon. Then from pole to pole he views in breadth and without long pause, downright into the world's first region throws his flight precipitant and wings with ease through the pure marble air his oblique way amongst innumerable stars, that shone stars distant, but thy hand seemed other worlds, or other worlds they seemed, or happy eyes, like those Hesperian gardens farmed of old. Fortunate fields, and groves and flowery vales, thrice happy ills, but who dealt happy there? He stayed not to inquire, 
Above them all the golden sun in splendour like is heaven allured his eyes. Thither his course he bends through the calm firmament, but up or down, by centre or eccentric, hard to tell, or longitude, with a great luminaire aloof the vulgar constellations thick, that from his lordly eye keep distance due, dispenses light from far. They, as they move thy sorry, dance in numbers that compute days, months, and years towards his all-cheering lamp, turn swift their various motions, or are tuned by his magnetic beam that gently warms the universe, and each inward part with gentle penetration, though unseen, shoots invisible virtue even to the deep, so wondrously was set his station bright, their lands the fiend, a spotlight which perhaps astronomer in the sun's lucent orb, though his gazed optic tube yet never saw, the place he found beyond expression bright compared without on earth, metal or stone, not all parts like, but all alike informed which radiant light, as glowing iron with fire. If metal, parts seemed gold, parts seemed clear, if stone, carbuncle most or chrysolite, ruby or topaz, to the twelve that shone in Aaron's breastplate, and a stone besides imagined rather oft them elsewhere seen, that stone, or like to that which here below philosophers in vain so long have sought, in vain, though by thy powerful art they bind, volatile Hermes, and call up unbound in various shapes old Proteus from the sea, drained through a limbic to his native form. What wonder, then, if fields and regions here breathe forth elixir pure, and rivers run portable gold, when with one virtuous touch the arc sun so far from us remote produces with terrestrial humour mixed. Here, in the dark, so many precious things of colour glorious and effects so rare. Here, matter new to gaze the devil met, undazzled, far and wide his eyes commands. For sight no obstacle found here, nor shade, but all sunshine, as when his beams at noon culminate from the equator, as they now shot upward still direct, whence no way round, shadow from body opaque can fall, and the air, nowhere so clear, sharpens his visual ray to objects distant far, whereby he soon saw with keen a glorious angel stand. The same who John saw also in the sun. His back was turned, but not his brightness hid. Of beaming sunny rays, a golden tiara circled his head, nor less his locks behind. Illustrious on his shoulders fledged with wings lay waving round. On some great charge employed he seemed, or fixed in cognitation deep. Glad was the spirit impure as now in hope, to find who might direct his wandering flight to paradise, the happy seat of man. His journeys end and our beginning woe. But first he cast to change his proper shape, which else might work him danger or delay. And now a stripling cherub he appears, not of a prime, not such as in his face, youth smiled celestial, and to every limb suitable grace diffused, so well he feigned, under a coronet his flying hair in curls on either cheek played, wings he wore of many a coloured plume sprinkled with gold, his habit fit for speed succinct, and held before his decent steps a silver wand. He drew not nigh unheard, the angel bright, ere he drew nigh. His radiant visage tuned, adomished by his ear, and straight was known by Archangel Uriel, one of the seven who in God's presence nearest to his throne stand ready at command and are his eyes. That ran through all the heavens or down to the earth, bear his swift errands over moist and dry, over sea and land. Him, Satan, thus accosts. Uriel, for thou of those seven and spirits that stand in sight of God's high throne, gloriously bright, the first art want his great authentic will interpreter through highest heaven to bring, 
where all his sons by embassy attend. And here art likeliest, by supreme decree, like honour to obtain, and his eye to visit off this new creation round, unspeakable desire to see, and know all these his wondrous works, but chiefly man, his chief delight and favour, him for whom all these his works so wondrous he ordained, hath brought me from the choirs of cherubim alone thus wandering, brightest seraph tell in which of these shining orbs hath man his fixed seat or fixed seat hath none but all these shining orbs his choice to dwell that i may find him and with secret gaze or open admiration him behold on whom the great creator hath bestowed worlds and on whom hath all these graces poured that both in him and all things as is meet the universal maker we may praise, who justly hath driven out his rebel foes to deepest hell, and to repair that loss created this new happy race of men, to serve him better. Wise are all his ways, so spake the false dissembler unperceived, for neither man nor angel can discern hypocrisy, the only evil that walks invisible except to God alone, by his permissive will through heaven and earth, and oft though wisdom wakes, suspicion sleeps, at wisdom's gate, and to simplicity resigns her charge, while goodness thinks no ill, while no ill seems, which now for once beguiled Uriel, though regent of the sun, and held in the sharpest sighted spirit of all in heaven, who to the fraudulent impostor foul in his uprightness answer thus returned fair angel thou desire which tends to know the works of god thereby to glorify the great workmaster leads to no excess that reaches blame but rather merit praise the more it seems excess that led thee hither from thy imperial mansion thus alone to witness with fine eyes what some perhaps contented with report here only in heaven for wonderful indeed all his works pleasant to know and worthiest to be all had in remembrance always with delight but what created mind can comprehend by number or the wisdom infinite that brought them forth but hid their causes deep I saw when at his word the formless mass, this world's material mould, came to be a heap. Confusion heard his voice, and wild uprest stood ruled, stood vast, infinitude confined, till at his second bidding darkness fled, light shone, and order from disorder sprung. Swift to their several quarters hasted then, the cumbrous elements, earth, flood air fire and this ethereal quintessence of heaven flew upward spirited with various forms that rolled orbical and turned to stars numberless as thou seest and how they move each had his place appointed each his course the rest in circuit walls this universe looked downward on the globe whose hither side with light from hence though but reflected shines that place is earth the seat of man that light his day which else as the other hemisphere night would invade but there the neighbouring moon so call that opposite fair star he aid timely interposes and he mouthly rounds still ending still renewing through mid heaven with borrowed light her countenance triform hence fills the empties to enlighten the earth and in her pale dominion checks the night that spot to which i point is paradise adam's abode those lofty shades his bower they way thou canst not miss me mine requires thus said he turned and satan bowing low as to superior spirits is want in heaven where honour due and reverence none neglects took leave and towards the coast of earth beneath down from the ecliptic sped with hoped success 
froze his steep flight with many an eerie wheel, nor stayed till on Nefeti's top he lights. <laughs> 